So I got these batteries from a job I did on Friday. They're deep cycle flooded lead acid batteries. And uh, I got to bring these back to the shop on Monday for uh, core charges. And I uh, figured before I do that, I'd give a little video on how to maintain these batteries, how to diagnose them. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's something a lot of people don't know how to do. And it uh, comes in handy. All right, before we get into it, uh, let's talk about safety equipment. And uh, my advice for that would be to consult your uh, your local uh, OSHA or, or whatever representative tells you how to do that types of things because uh, uh, you shouldn't get safety advice from people on YouTube because uh, God knows who you're talking to. A uh, uh, little, little, little hint would be uh, most uh, chemical smock, uh, full face shield, chemical gloves and a, and a chemical shower in case things explode into your face. Uh, mo most people will never ever do that. I've, I've, I've actually honestly never seen a customer that had all that safety equipment set up for filling batteries. So take that for what it is. Um, minimum is, is at least a set of gloves. Um, it's not like it's not like the alien. Um, uh, in the alien movies where when he, when he gets shot he, he bleeds acid and it, and it bleeds through seven decks uh, you, you get that stuff on your skin it's it's kind of like a bee sting a half an hour after it happens it's annoying and it's it's not comfortable uh, I've gotten that stuff on my skin hundreds of times and in my eyes uh, at, at some points in time and uh, like I said it's it's uncomfortable it's it's not sci-fi pain but it, it's just something you know you, you want to avoid so like I said check your uh, your 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 local safety people about what kind of PPE you should be using before you uh, do something like this so let's let's get into maintenance uh, now that we got safety out of the way um, the one thing that nobody does and and why I have a job and uh, basically uh, maintenance is pretty simple with these things uh, the way you're supposed to run them is fully charge check the electrolyte and fill it if it if need be uh, run the machine down to the point where it's pretty much dead and then recharge it uh, filling the batteries um, some people uh, swear by distilled water. I have customers that use distilled water. I have customers that use tap water uh, City water is fairly clean. I wouldn't put well water into a battery, but like I said I've, I've had customers that were religious with distilled water and religious with just using the freaking garden hose And I really don't notice that much of a difference as far as longevity of the batteries I'm sure it does make a difference, but like I said, I haven't noticed that much of a difference I do notice that distilled water batteries um, have a little bit less occasion of corrosion on them but take that for what it is now when you're filling these filling these batteries be it distilled water or uh or uh, tap water or whatever whatever you decide to do uh they, they have these filling jugs uh, i don't keep one personally i just use a antifreeze bottle that i washed out with with a nozzle on it uh, it's just quicker for me uh, you're really not gonna be able to see it too well because it's kind of black on black but down inside there you can see there's like a collar in there and then it comes to it comes to an end at the bottom when you're filling these batteries you need to fill it up just to the bottom of that collar uh, reason being is is because when these charge and and they discharge uh, the electrolyte heats up and it like anything it expands and it just keeps keeps the batteries from overflowing and that's also technically why you're supposed to fill these after um, after they're charged and not before um, the one thing about that is if the like in this case again I'm not sure if you can see it but these batteries are completely dry and the electrolyte has dropped below the um, below the cells so in that case you, you definitely do want to add a little bit of a little bit of water to these batteries before you charge them because again technically if you charge a battery and, and the and the uh, sorry the the uh, the cells are dry you damage the battery. Now the battery company is going to tell you that that part that was dry is no longer good and, and, and you should go buy a new battery. And I, I mean they should because they're trying to sell you batteries. But my personal opinion is it, it just, just shortens the life of the battery. Probably shortens the capacity of it. And uh, yeah. Another thing a lot of people do which um, 
uh, is a mistake. It's not really maintenance. It's just misuse of the batteries. I see this a lot with um, with maintenance departments. They'll have, say, like a scissor lift or a golf cart that they don't use that often, but they want it to be fully charged when they use it. So, say they're going to like do a uh, uh, replace a replace a light a light fixture or something like that. So this thing's been sitting on charge. It's fully charged. They go take the scissor lift, drive it over to the light, use it for you know an hour come back and they've only used like a quarter of the charge of the batteries and then they, they plug it in and then start charging again. Uh, these deep cycle batteries like to be discharged all the way down to um, their lowest point which is 5.8 something odd volts and then charged all the way back up again. They don't like that, uh, we like to call it opportunity charging. Um, they don't like that it sulfates the cells and it decreases the capacity of the battery. So keep that in mind if you're using one of these things. Um, if it's, you know, it's Friday afternoon and the thing's got a half a charge on it and you know you're going to be using it all day Monday, fine, plug it in, get it up to full charge so you get the, uh, so you get the full day out of it. But just don't make a habit of um, short charging these batteries because it does decrease the uh, capacity and, and, and longevity of them. Now, aside from all that, the only other maintenance you really need to do to these batteries, if you get a condition, let's move this movie over here, where you have corrosion on one of the terminals, it's good to clean that up while you see it. Uh, it'll get bad to the point where the wire that's connected just doesn't connect, conduct electricity anymore. Another good thing to know with these batteries is just how they're wired up. Um, there's different versions of series connections and parallel connections. Um, it's a lot easier for me to do this on a piece of paper to show you. So I am going to pretend like I'm going to go inside and, and uh, do that right now. But I'm actually going to do that after I'm done recording this video. So we'll, we'll, we'll cut to that. All right, so we got four batteries, just like the uh, toxic waste I got sitting in my van there. Uh, I colored mine blue to uh, match my balls. Uh, these batteries are six volts each, and we're going to call these 100 amp hour batteries, which isn't right, but it's easy math and it'll be easier to understand. Now, with a series connection, which is what we mostly see uh, with these style batteries, be it a golf cart or a... Uh, scissor lift or, or whatever have you. This is actually some graph paper I got from a genie class I was in probably 20 years ago. And this is what happens when you get old. You just don't throw things away. So, um, where the hell was I? It just went off track there, didn't I? But, uh, yeah, so generally talking with these, with these series connections, you'll end up with uh, going from positive to negative. So positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative and then your last battery will come out and that'll be your actual positive feed off of the battery then you have a negative connection coming off coming off and that will be your negative now with series connections when you wire up batteries in series and it doesn't matter if it's lead acid batteries uh, uh, lithium batteries, it doesn't matter. When you wire them up in series, your voltage increases, but your amp hours, or your amps, will say, stay the same. So, essentially, what we're ending up with here is 24 volts at 100 amp hours. Now, if we were to add another, say, four batteries onto this, you'd have 48 volts. I mean, you could do the math, just add six volts for every for every battery you add onto it. The most common you'll you'll run into, especially in my industry, is 24 48 volts as far as as far as these uh, smaller uh, golf cart style batteries are concerned. Now when we're talking about parallel connection, parallel connections is basically the mirror image of a series connection. So same batteries um, six volts each, 100 amp hours, but instead of going positive to negative, we're negative to negative to negative, positive to positive to positive, and then you end up with the same voltage, which is six volts, but you quadruple the amps. Uh, you'll, you'll really don't see this that much um, in, in this style setup. I'm just doing this to commonality with, with the other one, but uh, you do see this occasionally. I, I know Toyota 
uh, some other smaller diesels to save uh, save space and to keep commonality of parts. They'll use their smaller four-cylinder propane engine battery, uh, which is a 3560 battery, I think it is, and um, they'll stack two of them together. So you'll have you'll still have your 12 volts, but you'll you'll double your cold cranking amps on the battery. And then when you want to get a little bit fancy, you actually have a series parallel connection. And the way that works is you have two banks of batteries, uh, 24 volts each, and they're both hooked up in series. So you have 24 volts coming out of them, but then you have the parallel connection of these two packs being tied together, which will actually give you your 200 amp hours. And this you see, um, Sometimes in boom lifts, sometimes they do this just for, not boom, yeah, actually, yeah, electric boom lifts use them sometimes. And sometimes they just use it for, for weight distribution on aerial work platforms. So you have batteries sitting on either side to balance things out. But, um, yeah, like I said, this isn't as common as just a, st a straight up series uh, hookup, but I mean, you do see that, but whenever, like, whenever you have, batteries and you're wondering is it series or parallel just just check your your leads are you going positive to negative or are you going negative to negative positive to positives all across the side if you're going positive to negative it's series and if you're matching your terminals going across positives and negatives it's parallel and if it's a mix of the two then you got a series parallel but yeah, so I mean that's about it as far as wiring goes. It's it's pretty simple once you once you kind of draw it out on paper like this. So uh, you know, let's get back to the van and uh, get back to work. Well, now now that we know how these things are, are wired up, let's get into the fun part, and that's uh, figuring out if they're bad or not. Um, some tools you're going to need. Most of this stuff's pretty cheap, so I mean don't don't be uh, put off by that. This is a battery hydrometer. It basically measures the um, level of acid. Uh, or the acidity of the uh, electrolyte in the battery. This is just a digital multimeter. Um, this is an old Blue Point one. Uh, I believe Fluke made this for Blue Point and they just rebranded it, but you don't need a fancy one like this. The $5 one at Harbor Freight will do you just as good. And we also have a battery load tester. This one does. 6 and 12 volts. Uh, there's two different scales here. That's a 6 volt scale. That's a 12 volt scale. And uh, yeah, this is 20 bucks. Harbor Freight. You can get these on Amazon. Uh, it'll put a load onto it about 100 amps. One thing I did forget to mention is um, you want to do most of these tests on a on a fully charged battery. At least ran a cycle on the batteries so so they come up as far as they, uh, as they can. I mean, you're checking them probably for a reason, so they might not come up to full charge, but run a charge cycle on them, and that just makes all these readings a lot better. So with the hydrometer, you just want to start off each individual battery here. These particular ones have three cells, and squeeze the bulb, and then note how acidic the electrolyte is. And normally, I'm doing it for time but normally I would I would check each one of these twice now again my hydrometer is pretty roached out but basic rule of thumb with these is uh, if you could read it that would be 1300 right there uh, a 50 point difference between two cells would indicate a bad cell so keep that in mind and the reason being is for that is you have one cell that's bad that it won't come up to full charge. The other cells will compensate by overcharging. Now, digital multimeter set to DC voltage. I'm trying to get it so you can see that where there's no glare from my light. Uh, that should be good enough. And you simply, I'm going to need those posts, aren't I? There we go. Let's simply hook up digital multimeter to it and take a voltage reading uh, these are reading 5.98 fully charged these are about six and a half fully discharged would be uh, 5.8 so I mean this battery technically would be dead in this situation and what you would want to do is 
check each individual battery as you go down and if you see one battery that's super high and another battery that's super low that would indicate again that you had a bad cell now another thing you could do with the multimeter if you don't have a load tester is uh, just hook a multimeter up to either an individual battery or the entire pack that's all hooked up together and then just run the machine and see what your battery voltage drops down to uh, do the math if 5.8 is completely dead and it's dropping below 5.8 well then you got a bad battery then you go back and you check each individual battery now as for load testing uh, if you're not familiar with these style load testers this is just a a simple uh, I, I call them toaster style load testers and it's just got a resistive coil in there and you hook the battery up to it you hit the button and it just throws the power through the coil and uh, puts a load on the battery and it will actually tell you whether or not the battery is good weak or bad so simply just hook it up black to negative red to positive uh, read your voltage starting off which were again right around six volts and you hit the switch and you hold it for 10 seconds and see what happens so right there we're reading weak and it held on weak now my, my personal opinion is if a battery is running if a battery reads weak and i'm looking at it for a reason the battery's done so i, I just go i would go ahead and replace it at that point uh they do make other load testers which will do more than 100 amps uh carbon pile load testers i believe is what they're called and it's basically just a, a stack of carbon plates and you, you screw them down they press together and they, they put a bigger load on them they're expensive and they're also fragile and that's why i don't keep one on my van but for most batteries if you could put 100 amps on them and they kind of hold up you're usually in pretty good shape so you, you've done all that uh, one of one of three or all three of those methods and uh you can pretty much determine if you got a bad battery in, in your uh in your pack there uh this also applies to the big commercial batteries which doesn't use uh, a bunch of uh, individual six volt batteries it'll have just one big battery with individual cells and you can apply this to that as well uh the one thing that these tests do not indicate is capacity uh, sometimes with your hydrometer or your load tester you'll kind of get a sense that one of these batteries isn't holding up but capacity I mean short of having a big expensive load bank that'll put a load on these batteries over time uh, you, you really can't determine it so that just comes down to what the person who's talking to you is uh, talking about so you know you, you did all these tests and everything's you know kind of eh. the guy saying that the batteries don't last as long as they did before uh they, they're, they're pretty old like these ones are are about five years old which is kind of the lifespan you see on these batteries and uh yeah at that point in time you know you're looking at them the guy's saying they're not lasting long enough so you just replace the batteries so that's about it as far as uh deep cycle flooded lead acid batteries go um i don't think i mentioned before but these are very similar to the 12 volt battery that you would have inside your car um basically the same construction deep cycle batteries um, don't kill me on this but they basically have more lead in them they're a lot more they're a lot heavier and they're a lot uh, uh, they're actually designed to be uh, charged and fully discharged whereas to like a, a car battery um, it's not really designed for that it's designed just to throw those amps into that starter get it run and then the alternator takes over if you run a, a, a car battery in something that would be normally used for a deep cycle battery it's going to seriously uh, reduce the life lifespan of the battery like quick so just keep that in mind uh, one, one thing I do want to mention is um, I get a lot of phone calls people ask for help with uh, diagnostics on things uh, that, that run these deep cycle these deep cycle batteries like pallet jacks is a, is a big one and um, one, one thing I always say is check the batteries and the batteries are the fuel of the machine so I mean you wouldn't work on a you know a gasoline power lawnmower with uh, without any gas in it because it ain't got no gas in it so the batteries and like I said with with computer controlled um, uh, 
machines nowadays, you get that battery voltage down to a certain level and the computer just doesn't know what the hell it's doing and it starts throwing CAN bus codes and all kinds of goofy shit. And I see guys chasing their ass looking for, for a CAN bus code. Meanwhile, the batteries are sitting there at 22 volts and as soon as you put a load on it, it drops to 18 volts and the computer just doesn't know what the hell to do with that. So, like I said, always always start with the batteries with any, with any diagnostics on any um, electronic uh, battery powered equipment that you start off with that you're that you're working on um so yeah that's about it um we went over maintenance that no one's ever going to do we went over diagnostics which you're going to have to do if you don't do the maintenance uh if you got these batteries a lot of people uh use these in golf carts you know what i mean save you a couple bucks if you do some maintenance on them they're about 200 dollars a pop nowadays uh, retail so I mean yeah I mean I save you a few bucks you get a couple more years out of them because you actually paid attention to them and uh, yeah we did diagnostics so you could find them uh, normally with these batteries just just as a side note um, if you find one if they're they're in a pack you know usually it's a pack of four which gives you 24 volts uh, if they're in a pack like that you um, have one bad one uh, it's usually good to just replace all of them uh, there are exceptions to that I've had a few customers who just don't want to spend the money that's fine it's your money you can spend it however the hell you want uh, problem with that is that the new battery uh, will come up to charge faster than the older book batteries and it'll overcharge the new battery and it'll just kind of beat on the newer battery while the while the, the older batteries are trying to come up the charge same thing with the discharge rate on those so um, like I said there are exceptions to that and I don't beat people up if they don't want to spend especially with the, the larger ones I mean they could be up to $500 a pop so I mean a customer has an old whoop piece of equipment and he's just like you know what? I don't want to put any more money into this thing I'm gonna replace it next year just throw one battery into it and uh, be done with it and and I got no problems with that but but uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm sure I missed some stuff. Hopefully nothing too important. Uh, as always, any questions, drop them down inside the comments and I'll be happy to answer them. Or uh, one of my uh, subscribers will be happy to answer them. You guys are pretty smart. Uh, probably smarter than me <laughs> in, in, in some occasions. So uh, yeah, that's it for me. Um, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you next time.